Uh, we're going to have a great night. I had a great, good omen coming here to the, to the show. As I stopped out front, the odometer on my car rolled over to 100,000 miles exactly as I stopped out front. I think that's a good omen. I also think there was a quicker way to get here. Um, got to see a lot of Canada, so... Um, I love Canada, very friendly country, Canada. Its national emblem says everything. A maple leaf, tree, shade, pastoral, peaceful. National emblem of the United States, an eagle, a hunter, a raptor. Don't mess with the United States. We'll swoop down and rip you apart. <laughs> mess with Canada? We'll plug your gutters, eh? <laughs> From Canada, eh? You know, Canadians aren't saying eh as much as they used to. I don't know if you've been out there recently, but they're not saying eh like these. I'll tell you why. They're secretly meaning to get rid of this vocal habit. The meanings are called eh eh. <laughs> Do you know how Canada was named? Do you know how Canada was named? They, when they wanted their own sovereignty, England wasn't very happy about it. They said, okay, yeah, you can have your own country, but it's gonna have a silly name, consonants only, and three at that, like an airport. And they had a local official with a hat with nothing but consonants on it, and they said, now you reach in there and announce what you pull out, whatever he says you write down, that'll be the name of your silly little country, big country. So he reaches in, and he goes, C, eh? N, eh? D, eh? Did you get that? That's how Canada was named. <laughs> I should mention, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I begin my show, that I am a member of Mensa, uh, that society. I have to have an IQ of 148 or better to get in. Myself and a buddy share a membership. Um, but, but, but. I'm confused. Technology, you know, I, I rented a, a car the other day and it had all the latest bells and whistles. You know, I, as I approached the car, I pushed a button and the lights came on, on the key fob. I pushed another button on the key fob and the car started. For a moment, I thought it was gonna leave without me. <laughs> they, uh, you're a great laugher, sir. Thanks for sitting up front. Uh, <laughs> you know, they have self-driving cars now. They drive all by themselves. How low would you feel if you were hitchhiking and a self-driving car passed you by? Just. <laughs> Technology, you know, they're called smartphones, but anybody gets to use them. Uh, I still have a landline. I have a landline in my house so I can call my smartphone to find out where it is in the house. Plus it's on vibrate, then I need a seismologist as well. well thank you over there, thank you. That's very difficult to get seismologists as a punchline. It really is. And, I think I pulled it off. You know, even more difficult to get as a punchline, the word loom. Loom, here we go. Loom. I, uh, I'm starting to get phone solicitations on my cell phone. There used to be just the province of landlines, but now I'm getting on my cell phone. I get a call on my cell phone the other day. The other day they go, hello, is this Mark Abel? I go, no, this is Milt Abel. And he goes, well, you've won. <laughs> Yeah, think about that. I got it wrong. I'm still in first place. This is... He goes, you want a brand new Jeep Grand Cherokee. I said, well, great. Send it over. He goes, yeah, you want a Jeep Cherokee, a color TV, or a portable radio? Oh, give me a minute on that. Uh... I'll stick with the Jeep. He goes, yeah, you want one of these three gifts. All you have to do is come down and listen to our 90-minute lecture on condominiums. Ever gotten a call like this before? Yeah, so now I know what's up. So I go, you know what? You can keep the Jeep. And now I can tell he's losing me. So he goes, hey, wait a minute now. Didn't you once fill out an entry form in a shopping mall or a movie theater over the past couple years? That's what he asked. Pretty much saying, have you been outside and signed your name? You're involved, you know? So, so now I just want to get rid of him. So I say, you know what? I never freak at plus like that. I'm Amish. I shouldn't be on the phone right now. <laughs> Of course, my fear is now get a letter saying you've won a buggy or a loom. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. You guys are the triple backflip with a dismount right there. All right, so 
So smartphones, I had a smartphone malfunction on me once. This is a true story. It would call 911 all on its own without me pushing any buttons. It's an old, the old clamshell, you know, and it would call 911. Now, when 911 is called and they don't hear from you, they assume you're incapacitated. The phone will speak first. It becomes a live walkie-talkie. I'm picking blueberries in a field. I have my cell phone in my pants pocket, and in the middle of nowhere, out of my pants, I hear a voice say, do you need assistance? <laughs> And my first thought was, these aren't my pants. <laughs> it was in Malala. <laughs> Middle of nowhere. So uh, more, to, more about cell phones. You know, I, uh, what else I want to share with you? I have a horrible memory. Let me mention that, and I'm going to get back to cell phones. But I do have to qualify. I have a horrible memory. I was able to throw myself a surprise birthday party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I waited behind that couch for almost two hours. Uh, I don't think you guys are taking me seriously on this. It's a joke. <laughs> Let me try another party joke on you. A little party advice. Never go to a costume party dressed as a pinata. Never. Yeah, yeah. You'll get beaten and they'll take your candy. Don't do it. So... Cell phones, you know, I've had, I, my cell phone now is pretty good, uh, but I've had incarnations. One, I had, the GPS was off. It was always off. You are here. No, I'm not. I'm not here. I'm somewhere else. The only, the only place that phone got me accurately to was the beyond part of Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> Am I going too fast? Is that the story here? Am I? <laughs> the, uh, you know, and, and now, of course, uh, I have a great phone, but the autocorrect on the texting is a problem. You all know what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, it always get, it guesses at what you're trying to say. It doesn't really, it's not accurate. It's like talking to someone who's hard of hearing. You know? <laughs> Let's meet at three. You wanna meet in a tree? No, I don't wanna meet in a tree. <laughs> if my smartphone's autocorrect was entered into a spelling bee, it would come in list. <laughs> So, it hasn't been a good week. I lost my vacuum cleaner. I'm talking about technology problems. I lost my vacuum cleaner. Yeah, I had a Roomba, you know, one of those automatic, moves around on its own. Yeah, I left the front door open. It wandered off. It is now cleaning the great outdoors with the other wild Roomba. Have you heard about the herds of wild Roomba out there? There's hundreds of them. They're combing back across the country. And they're reproducing on their own, and well, mine's not. Mine's been fixed. Uh, uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. You ever been talking to someone? They'll, they'll stop mid-sentence and go, oh, what was I going to say? <laughs> I don't know. I could take a shot at it, but the odds. Uh, can I buy a vowel? <laughs> People say you're crazy if you talk to yourself. Think this is truly crazy you talk to yourself? No, it's more what you say is the deciding factor, isn't it? <laughs> There's a world of difference between, gee, where'd I put my car keys and I am Satan's favorite pastime. <laughs> People say you're crazy if you answer yourself. Well, maybe so. <laughs> I'd say you're definitely crazy if you answer yourself incorrectly. Might be a problem there. Is that me in the mirror? No. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> I'm sorry I brought it up. Speaking of who are you, I did a real wild private party last month. I did a, I do a lot of corporate entertainment. I did a real wild private party last month. It was a company picnic for the Witness Protection Program. Uh, everybody had name tags on, but there's nothing written on them. I, I made the mistake of asking, who made the potato salad? We don't know. Uh, so some personal news. Uh, recently divorced. Uh, wasn't my idea. Uh, apparently my... Marriage had an expiration date. They were difficult to find. It was apparently underneath the toilet seat. Had I left the seat down, uh, she might not have found it. Um, no, I'm as loyal as a dog. I really am. I, I, you know, I, and dogs are loyal. 
They really, you never see a dog go up to its owner and go, you know, we need to talk. It, uh, I'm just not happy with you. I think I'd be happier with another owner. Now we saw a marriage counselor, but don't get into that. Um, uh, anyway, the marriage, the marriage didn't work. We argued a lot. We argued a lot. And a long argument with my wife was a lot like watching a fireworks show. Because I'd sit there and go, well, that's the finale. Nope, wait, there's more. Um, <laughs> wow, look at the colors. It goes with the music and everything. This is uh, outstanding. This is probably your best production. Um, We argued a lot in the car. When I was driving, my wife was to my side as my navigator. Uh, <laughs> much deeper laugh. Not the girls on that one. Uh, ladies, women. I'm not a big fan of gender generalizations about when, with stand-up comedy. You know, comics will come here and say, oh, men do this and women do that. But there's always an exception. There's always... Well, I, I will give you one gender generalization that I think holds true. And that is that... Women are the only gender that give each other gifts for no occasion whatsoever. Women will do this, you know? I thought it was perfect for you, wanted you to have it. Never see another give a, never see a guy give another guy, go ahead, Bob, open it. <laughs> it's pajamas, go on. <laughs> We argue a lot about the kids. My wife, ex-wife, keep forgetting to cross her out. Um, <laughs> we argued about the kids. We argued whether we're going to spank our kids or not. I said, let's wait till they do something wrong. <laughs> That's a workable timetable, isn't it? Yeah, boy, and if, yeah, by the way, new parents out there, don't have dad do all the spanking when you, your kids are in trouble, you know? It wasn't fair. When I was a kid, my father did all the spanking. Made me hate and fear my father. I'd get in trouble, my mom would say, wait until your father gets home. i go, no, I got a flight to Paris. I'm not going <laughs> to. It wasn't fair to my dad. He'd come home and say, hi, son, I'm seeing you all day. Got to beat you. <laughs> you still love me, don't you? Oh, I cherish every visit, you bet. <laughs> Where is the logic in this when parents just say, hey, you could have hurt yourself. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> well, thanks for taking the chance out of it. <laughs> I miss being a kid, I do. I miss that lack of responsibility, the smell of new clothes in September. Remember that? Yeah, I'm no longer a kid now because I grunt. You grunt more as you get older. You ever see a six-year-old kid grunt to pick something up? Is that my toy? <laughs> Never dropping that again. <laughs> Jeez, I think I pulled a muscle playing tag this morning. I gotta remember to warm up. I'm not five anymore. Kids have great stuff for breakfast, Captain Crunch. We have any Captain Crunch fans in our audience? Yeah, yeah. What kind do you like? Peanut butter for the protein? Yeah, cap, and then there's crunch berries for the vitamins, and then regular cap crunch for the fiber. It's a whole diet regimen. Has, uh, anybody tried it recently? It rips roof your mouth apart. If it's not done right, you can die from it. It's a lot like puffer fish. I had cap crunch. I was at the hospital in an hour. I, I've been cop a clump. And the wolf of my mouth has just ripped the heck. They're skin dangling from wolf of Let me speak to you. I want to speak to you. The guy that pays you, go get him. <laughs> Doctor comes up. Yes, yeah, I'm Dr. Smith. Is there a pop? <laughs> Can I interrupt your breakfast? Well, yes, you do. <laughs> so, yeah, we argue about spanking the kids, and you know, and we have three kids. We have three children. Uh, we have hundreds of photos of our first child. Dozens and dozens of our second. Just a handful of our third. There may be a fourth child there's no physical record of, ladies and gentlemen. It, it changes, doesn't it? We have a lot of moms and dads out there, you know? 
Our first child, we brought her home from the hospital. We waited two weeks before we took her anywhere out in the world world where all those germs awaited. Our second child, just a matter of a couple days, took him on a stroll around the block. Our third child, we swung by Home Depot on the way home from the hospital. <laughs> We needed more of those outlet covers. The kids had chewed through the ones we had plugged in the wall. <laughs> Our first child, when she dropped her pacifier, we'd scoop it up and boil it for 30 minutes because it touched the ground. Well, you learn, don't you, parents? Second child, just run a hot water a minute. By the third child, she dropped pacifier, I just pick it up, put it in my mouth. There, I got to do that for you. It's ready to go. <laughs> Took the bullet for you, all set. One of the toughest places the kids is a nice restaurant, right? Moms and dads, three kids, they're all within five years of age. So three kids at one table for one hour in a nice posh, impossible, impossible. That's where you learn to yell at the top of your lungs without the table next to you hearing you. Don't just sit still for a And as much work as kids were, I gained weight as soon as I became a dad. You know why I gained weight as soon as I became a dad? You didn't finish that meal? Well, give it to me. I'll finish it. I was the dog with the credit card. <laughs> Trying to lose weight. Uh, started a new diet. Got to give up something. Always got to give up something. I'm giving up uh, mirrors and scales. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm telling you, you know, and, uh, well, I have a theory why we're an overweight society. We are an overweight society, and one of the reasons is we don't have to chase our food anymore. <laughs> Thank you for just getting the concept. The, uh, <laughs> well, you know, we used to burn a lot of calories getting dinner on the table. I think there should be grocery stores for dieters where food can run away at pace was alive. <laughs> Little package of chicken on a railing, like at a dog race. <laughs> Why really overweight people can go, well, the vegetables are stationary. <laughs> Instead of asking what's on special, anything weak or slow today? I've got a, got a bad wheel. Sprained my ankle playing Sudoku. I go to the gym, go to the gym. You know, my focus, I'm getting older. I'm uh, not as flexible as I used to be, that's for darn sure. Now when I spill change in my hand, I count it before I decide to pick it up. How much, <laughs> how much is that, 17 cents? I can come back for that, there's no hurry. <laughs> Get that later. No, my focus has changed, you know, uh, from going to the gym. My focus at the gym used to go for vanity, you know. I, I used to go for vanity. Now I go for longe longevity. I've gone from keeping up, keeping up appearances to just keep appearing. Uh, <laughs> let me uh, talk about uh, age just for a second. I'm taking care of both my parents. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my mom is on oxygen 24-7. Uh, so she has a cannula and a, and a cord. I live with her because I lost the house in the divorce. I know where it is. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, so, so she's on oxygen 24-7. She everywhere she goes, she has a cord to the base station. And, you know, I live with her. We played hide-and-go-seek once. Uh, there you are again, Mom. Found you right away. Yeah, every time, yeah. But she has Alzheimer's, so we can play over and over. And, uh, my dad is a loud talker. He's a very loud talker. <laughs> have you met him, Ariana? Have you met my dad? And he is a loud talker, isn't he? Yeah, I have a friend from the family here. And he's a very loud talker. I'll be talking to him on the cell phone, and people around me be going, take him off speakerphone. He is off speakerphone. He's that loud. <laughs> 
but he got a TV recently, and I'm trying to explain to him how to use the TV over the phone. He lives in another city. So I'm trying to explain over the phone how to use a remote control. It's like playing Pictionary from another room, ladies and gentlemen. Just... <laughs> and remote controls are so complicated now, aren't they? It used to just turn on and off the TV. That was it. Maybe change the channel. Now you can launch a strike to Syria with one of these things if you want to. <laughs> So I'm trying to explain him over the phone, and he's not the best at describing things. Well, the thingy has changed now. Now there's a different thingy. And now, well, what thingy are you talking? And so he goes on and on with thingy. He uses thingy so much that thingy doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> but we got, the ch we got the TV on. It's the Spanish Weather Channel. <laughs> Subtitled in Spanish. <laughs> so whenever I call him, I'll go, how you doing, Dad? Estoy frío. Okay. <laughs> So dating now, dating at my age, <laughs> at my age you don't date, you interview for a position. At my age, just, <laughs> people are set in their ways, they really are. I'm trying these, trying these dating apps. Grinder I found very frustrating. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure that would work here, but apparently it did. Good. Tinder, now Tinder's very interesting. Tinder is pretty much based on a one night stand, to my understanding. I, have, I mean, I don't use it uh, because I'm used to obstacles, so I use an app called Hinder. Uh, gives bad advice and, you know. I did go on a first date with this gal and she ended up crying at the end of the date, so that was the last date. Uh, <laughs> It wasn't me, it was her previous boyfriend, and she was still upset about it. In fact, she inferred that I would, she would say all these things that he did that was disrespectful, hurtful, insensitive, selfish, you know, and then he would do this, and she'd look at me. And then he would do, and it was really kind of insulting. It bothered me. I felt like I was at a luggage carousel at an airport, and all this emotional baggage was coming down. <laughs> And none of it was mine, you know, I, no, I don't do that, I don't do that, I don't do that, I don't, okay, I do that one, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so yeah, getting older, I saw my financial advisor recently, we met at the dollar store. <laughs> and, uh, I love the dollar store, it makes me feel wealthy. Because <laughs> I don't look at the price, if I like it, it goes in the cart. You know? <laughs> Get yourself something. Throw it in there. I don't care. <laughs> but I saw my financial advisor and we discussed my retirement. I asked him, I said, what do I need to do to live at my present lifestyle till the end of my days? And he said, you need to die suddenly. <laughs> All right. So we're start wrapping this up. I'm going to go... Uh, I'm gonna go camping up in Oregon. Go visit. I live in San Jose, but I'm gonna go up to Oregon, drive up Interstate 5. If, oh, jeez. Interstate 5 is not an exciting drive. If you've driven up there, it's straight as a beam of light for six hours. It's the kind of road about an hour into it, you go, a turn! <laughs> and that's the highlight of the trip, pretty much. Well, the post speed limit is 70 miles an hour. What does that mean when the sign says 70, folks? 80, 85, right? It's like tipping at 15%, you know? I mean, you just gotta get up that road as fast as you think you can get away with. Don't even know why. It's an urge you can't stop. It's like, you're a salmon. I've got a speed, I've got a spawn, I don't know why. And this analogy runs further, because think about it, we're all speeding, so it's this river of speeding, spawning salmon that Smokey the Bear, the police can reach you at any time, grab somebody, and give them a ticket. <laughs> well, don't you feel that way when you see someone pulled over? It's like, oh, they didn't make it. Sorry, gotta keep living. Let's go, they can't catch us all. Let's go. Yeah, I'm gonna go camping. I'm not a good camper. I tend to overpack. Office equipment? Well, I'd rather have a three-hole punch and not want it. Than want it and not have it. That's the kind of person I am. Yeah. 
By the way, uh, never open the back of a three-hole punch in a windy campsite. <laughs> I would have been there forever, picking up those little white circles, had not a herd of wild Roomba appeared from the east. <laughs> All right, that's my show. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Well, that didn't suck, did it? Wasn't that fun? Thanks for watching my show. Um, this, we have a call to action here at Dry Bar. And that is, you can see down here, there are buttons. You can actually support the arts, become a patron of the arts, and tip me for that show you just saw. And I'd like you to do that. Uh, in fact, uh, so much so, I've changed my name to a 501c so you can write it off. So please, uh, if you enjoyed the show, tip and support the comedy, support me, uh, and keep supporting Drive Bug Comedy.